here's an update on my shoulder. For the last four weeks, I've been doing my own program of weeks 13 to 16 post-operative. Now that takes care of seven mobility exercises and 17 rehab exercises. Now I'm not gonna go through all of those today, but what I'm gonna showcase you is a few of the ones that are quite interesting and I wanna go through with you. So the first mobility one that I've been doing is to help my hand behind the back because with my shoulder, that is really difficult and with most post-operative, that's, that's a tough one. Now to get that further around, I'm using a band. So this is where you can attach a yellow power band to a pole through the hand, wrap it around. Now the good thing about this is it means that that band is now taking care of my hand. I don't have to worry about so much, it could just hang there. Now the idea is to keep your upper body upright, okay? And as you go forward, the band takes your hand backwards, okay? To give you that stretch through the front of the shoulder to help you with hand behind back. But this hand is now gonna come in here and lift that up. And that's where you work on how much lift you need. So I'm not fighting the band, I'm actually letting the band take me back. But what I am trying to do is keep this up and I'm trying to keep this up. Now, for me, with my frozen shoulder, which is almost gone, this is really caning through here, but in a good way. And at this sort of stage, it's been nice and safe. Now, don't get me wrong, on weeks 13, when I started this four week program, this was, that was so hard. But now I've got heaps more range. So it's taken four weeks to go from about here to about there. Okay, so it's been every week you get a little bit more. So that's what it looks like at the end of that four week block. So that's the first one. Second thing I've also been doing, which is an old classic, which is getting on your roller and doing a chest stretch. Now with my shoulder, having that frozen shoulder inside there, along with the repair, it's been really difficult to get into external rotation. So when I started, it was, when I was down like this, I could hardly get my hands on the ground. But now what we're trying to do is we're not trying to aim to be here, we're trying to be aiming into a W position. So when you do this, your hands have got to be, your palms have got to be sort of back of your palms on the ground, and then you try and pull your shoulders down. So these go down, pull your ribs down, so you're almost flattening it back, but not quite. Keep nice and long, and what that's going to give you is a really decent stretch through the front. And if you drag your elbows in like a W, now I still can't do that on both shoulders, but this one was ridiculously tight. And now, over four weeks, it's loose enough to get into this position here. Now I still have trouble trying to get that full range and that, but that's a really good stretch. Now that one is five minutes stretch. When you get good at it, you could probably go to 10, but you want to be aiming to get not that position, you want to be doing that position. So it's a W position, which helps you with your external rotation and opens you up through all that muscle tissue and fascia through the front of the shoulder, okay? So those are your two mobility ones. And out of the 17 exercises in rehab for this four week block, I'm gonna go through four exercises, a press, an external rotation, an internal rotation, and an abduction one. Let's have a look at the press one. Now, here's something I prepared earlier. When you're doing a one arm scat press, it is now down on an angle, like a 45 degree angle. Now the reason for that is, this is getting closer and closer to being able to do a push up. So we're on a bit of an angle which gives us more gravity, but more load. Now, I suggest you either use a bar rigged up like this. You could also just put your hand on a bench top or a sturdy kitchen table. It doesn't have to be something like this. But what you're aiming for is a straight arm doing a scat press in this position here, okay? So when you drop down, the load through the shoulder is greater than what you're doing on the wall and on the floor. That's a lot harder. Now, obviously, the further you step away, I mean, I've got a wide stance here to keep it stable, but the further I step away, the harder it's gonna be. Obviously, the higher that bar is, the easier it's gonna be. You don't really need to go any lower than that because in the next stage, as in the block after this, in stage five, it's gonna be push-ups on the floor on your knees. So this is gearing you up to get some load down through the shoulder, to stabilize through the shoulder joint, and just work on your scapular protraction, retraction, so that 
sort of acceptance of you going into doing a push-up, that movement has to be rock solid. You have to also be rock solid inside the joint in that rotator cuff to hold it in place. That's a good entry point to do. So that's your press one. With external rotation, what I'm gonna do is go up from what we call neutral or zero to 45. Now a little wee tip on this one. When you're doing external rotation at 45 degrees, now I start off in red, four weeks ago now I'm on green. So that's where you progress from red to green. So by week sort of three or four, you should be on a green. So it's not down here, it's up at 45. Now the reason for that being is there's more load for the rotating up. I'm accessing more supraspinatus. Remember that's the one that I've torn and been repaired onto the bone. So we need to train that one. But when I do this, to get it right, if you just do it that way, the band's going to change angles. So you need to rotate towards the band if you're doing external rotation. And I call that 45 degrees as well. So if your arm's out 45 degrees, you're also facing the band on a 45 degree oblique angle like that. So when you pull backwards in that position, then that line of pull is pretty good for the shoulder, okay? Now the hard thing about this is if you've got a really short band, it's gonna be harder for you. So make sure that band has got enough length and you don't go too far back to make it too hard for yourself. So come in here, so there's a little bit of tension at the bottom, get that elbow out to 45 degrees, just straight out sort of Maybe a bit forward, not completely back, but forward like that. But this elbow has got to stay in one spot. So when you pull back, stabilize through your body, keep that elbow in one spot. Now you can see that I've warmed up enough. I don't have enough range here. I'm still struggling with my external rotation range. If you look on my right, you'll see that I've got that full 90-90, okay? So I'm up at 90 degrees at that point. With this one, I can't quite get there. And that's not a strength loss, that's still a capsulitis loss. Some of you won't have that problem. You'll be able to get all the way up into that 90 degrees, okay? So that's your external. The internal one that I've been doing is with a dumbbell. Now, basically I started off with two kilos, okay? Now, at home, if you don't have dumbbells, listen, what I used at home sometimes, if I couldn't find a dumbbell, or the battery drill. Now that sounds silly, but it's about the same weight and it works perfectly fine. Then what I've been doing is been doing it on a foam roller. So this is to help your internal rotation strength out at 45 degrees. It also helps with your mobility into external rotation. So when you do this one, I was out not 90, so 45, okay? 90 comes next week. This one is at 45. Then that is going to go, now it looks like you're going to external, but the load is for internal rotation. So you're going to go from sort of a little bit internal, you're going to roll that back into external rotation. Now the weight is going to help you with mobility and the strength out there in that outer range is crucial for your shoulder stability. So. Doing this one really slow is gonna really help your control mobility. Again, that wrist has gotta stay straight. You can't have the elbow flying around mid-air. That's gotta pivot on an imaginary axis, and you roll that backwards. Get as much stretch as you can. Work on that strength, that really weak outer range, and coming forward. Now that's really important for people who have had a subscap repair. So that one, you gotta go real careful on a subscap repair, but it's healed, it's just gonna be super weak. So mine hasn't been repaired, my supus has been repaired, so I'm strong in that position, I've just gotta worry about my mobility. Right, now the last one that I've been working on is also abduction range. Now, this is tough, and what you'll need is a wall. So, just any old wall will do. And you're gonna do both arms at the same time. Now, What's handy is I can see myself in a mirror right in front of me. And what I can see is whether my arms are even or not. So what you're trying to do is be not quite blocked onto the wall. Obviously your pelvis is on the wall, your shoulders are on the wall, and you're trying to keep upright as much as you can. Elbows and hands on the wall, and you're gonna go out into abduction as high as you can go, and then down again. Now, the good arm is only, only goes as much as the bad arm. Now, what will restrict you a bit of strength 
but probably mobility range. You'll find there's just, it's so tight through there that that's what you're, is gonna stop you. Now, you've gotta be careful you don't go into impingement and push the heck out of it and then jam that shoulder. This is specifically designed so you don't go and cheat and do that. So when I'm doing that, it's a lot different. I'm doing that as hard as I can go. So what's happening when I go here and do it? I'm coming forward, okay? So I'm cheating there. I'm not strict and going that way, all right? And this is what a lot of people do. They'll sort of go, oh, I've got range above my head, then start doing weights, but they're actually internally rotated. They're not actually in a strict position here. So this is gonna help you with making sure that you are staying true to how much range you've actually got. Now, on my right one, I've got about sort of 170 true. Now, so I step forward. When I go 180, I've obviously come forward into that plane that way, all right? So this one here, I've got about this much range by myself, but you can see I'm twisted, all right? So I'm cheating a little bit when I do that. So you've got to do both at the same time, and that'll stop you cheating, and that'll give you a really good benchmark to how much abduction you actually have based on your mobility through the joint. And that takes care of all your external rotation mobility as well. Now it's a very, very important one to do way before you're going to even think about doing shoulder press down in week 20. Okay, So there's six exercises out of the 7 plus 17. There's a lot to go through. I just thought I'd show a few of those. See you next time.